My name is Laima Weige. I am based in Vilnius, Lithuania, and um, I am a co-founder of an organization called um, House of Diversity and Education. We are based on the um, approach of intersectionality, so we focus on multiple, multiple forms of discrimination and people uh, who, are, who find themselves at intersection, uh, intersections of different kinds of oppressions. Uh, so we believe it is um, quite uh, interconnected, the, the forms of oppression and domination. Um, mostly we are working recently with LGBT rights, uh, LGBT rights to family, as well as LGBT bullying, young persons, and women rights. I think that um, women rights, for sure, because um, we may think that because we have now uh, a woman president, all the problems are solved, but in reality this is just uh, one side of the story. We still have a very big um, uh, well, uh, problem of gender-based crime, for instance. In fact, we still don't have this definition of gender-based crime or marital rape, female genital mutilation. Uh, we don't have these definitions in our legal, um, uh, legal acts. This might be a problem. And this was actually given as uh, one of two fields of priority by CEDU committee. So this is the UN committee that functions under convention of elimination of all forms of discrimination against women. So we must report how we deal with this problem of uh, gender-based violence, violence in two years' time. Now a year passed, so in about one year. Another field is LGBT rights. Uh, where we have no rights whatsoever at this moment. No, it's, uh, it's not allowed and we don't have partnerships either. So basically there is no uh, right to family whatsoever. And we also have a mild um, uh, anti-propaganda law, um, which is similar to, to the Russian law that um, but um, it is directed, uh, uh, it's so, it is called the Law on Protection of Minors Against Detrimental Information. It provides that it is not basically allowed, well, it's detrimental for the children to hear any kind of information that gives them the idea, which is um, the idea of a family that is different from what is traditionally perceived. Uh, therefore, it is not allowed to argue that um, same-sex marriages should be allowed or that same-sex partnerships should be allowed. And this law has really been used. Um, and we see that some books have been um, well, restricted. Um, some social advertisements have been restricted. So it is really functioning, unfortunately. This organization was established as very much like do-it-yourself organization by four young women. Um, and so it is um, not connected with a lot of funding, uh, or a lot of um, support, definitely not from the Lithuanian, uh, uh, let's say, state uh, institutional organizations, not from the government. We have never received any money. But, um, uh, but we do... Um, we do try to to um, to act in the fields that are familiar for us. So, for instance, education, uh, law, uh, journalism, writing, talking to people, uh, because we have many volunteers who are uh, who are active and who are professional in these fields. Uh, so, we have the projects uh, on, for instance, diverse families. Uh, and I think that we really managed to get through for, uh, with the idea that uh, families can be diverse and uh, LGBT people also have families. Um, we maintained um, a website which uh, talks about um, lesbians and gays having children and their family worries and uh, a blog where a lesbian woman was uh, sharing her story about um, expecting a baby with her partner. We have Family Quality Days, um, which is um, in the beginning of uh, May in every year. Uh, because we are not allowed to address the teenagers, for instance, in, in uh, Lithuania, 
uh, due to this uh, act on protection of minors. So we are trying to address the uh, social workers and psychologists and students who are going to be the educators themselves. We are, we are giving lectures in a couple of universities, uh, which are very informal, but uh, we do it regularly now. And also parents, we try to speak with the parents because we cannot address uh, children and help the teens, but we can, uh, we can address the adults. I have heard some, some of the uh, colleagues who did face threats, death threats, and, uh, uh, but for us, probably the, the most scary event for me was organiz organizing the first Family Equality Day, uh, because when we said that we are inviting also same-sex couples with children to, to this um, event, uh, there was a terrible outrage in, in some of the um, parts of the society, and then uh, there were some nationalistic groups who started to share this event and say, say that uh, come to this park and bring your baseball bats. And it was a little bit uh, scary at that moment. We started also to share, um, how to say, uh, a list of targets and the first uh, names. And the first name was actually my partner at that time. So it was a little bit uncomfortable and when we try to use uh, when we try to address the police um, and in, unfortunately they, they were not so supportive at that moment they said that uh, it was our responsibility to protect ourselves we should hire a private security firm the event happened but it was a little bit uh, scary especially considering that there were children involved and we were there with our families For me, human rights is definitely something, it's, it's not something that I choose, but it's a, a passion that I have. And I definitely recognized myself in this course. Um, I think uh, it was since uh, teenage years, when I was maybe 16 years old, and I read the first book. On, uh, it was uh, Simone de Beauvoir, The Second Sex, <laughs> which is, um, everybody probably knows this book. And I recognized myself in it. I thought, okay, I'm, I'm a feminist. And as a feminist, I felt that I really need to do something as well. I need to, uh, to volunteer. I need to put some efforts into making the lives of women better. And, and then, uh, naturally, all the other causes uh, defending human rights came together with this. Uh, LGBT rights, ethnic minorities, it, it was, I, I can definitely say that human rights is a passion. Sometimes I'm seen as an expert and I'm invited to the fields where I wouldn't uh, be able to speak otherwise. Um, on the other hand, sometimes um, I am perceived as biased because I'm uh, human rights. I'm, I'm interested in human rights, and I'm I'm seen as biased. Uh, human rights is not something that comes natural in Lithuania. So, for quite many people, human rights is almost uh, like a negative thing. Like this, uh, unfortunately, it is. Um, human rights, just of any kind, is seen as an invasion by the European Union in order to change our cultural traditions. Uh, that's why sometimes I'm not, um, um, I'm not able to participate in certain fields where I otherwise would be able to participate as a lawyer and a lecturer. But I think it helps um, to know what you're talking about and to be quite uh, certain that this is going to be uh, good for all of the people. Um, because I think that, um, unfortunately, we have this um, uh, situation in Lithuania that not all people are seen as uh, valuable, uh, which is a paradox because we are a very small country which has nothing else, no uh, resources, just the people. Um, I think the situation is definitely changing for the better. I really believe so. And I think if we um, 
if we are going to have peace, uh, then everything is definitely will change to the better. And people starting to be more and more free, and they are opening their eyes, they are getting to know uh, each other, they are becoming to be um, more creative. We are moving forward, and I think in 10 years' time we, we will see more open Lithuania.